Hi, I'm Ben Pretorius, the owner of Fully Fly Fishing Safaris, and I've been hosting trips here to the Maldives for the last 12 years. The things that are really, or well, the skills that are really important here are your ability to cast. Um, when I say cast, it's cast quickly and cast, um, cast far and at times. Um, your stripping ability, because here uh, stripping baskets are not essential but are, are really functional and getting used to uh, working with a stripping basket is really important. The ability to see fish and then of course patience. Um, you have to have patience, especially if you're targeting GTs, which is, 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 is a, a target species that most people want to target here. Yeah. And it's, it's that skill set that really is required here. Yeah. Uh, the equipment that you require here is basically a 9 weight and a 12 weight. 9 weight for your smaller species like your bluefin which are very prolific here. Uh, we've got triggers uh, and in places there are bonefish. Not too many but there are bones here. But triggers are, are really a, 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 a special target species to, uh, to catch here that's, uh, that one can be really proud of if you do get them because they're quite technical fish. And then obviously a lot of bluefin trevally. And then for uh, your 12 weight if you're targeting GTs, absolutely essential. Yeah, so those are the two, uh, two rods, uh, weight, uh, weights that you really require. Could you describe a typical itinerary for a day of fishing? It's, it's very much tide based, so what we do is plan all the, all the activity around tides and, and uh, the flows and drops of the tide. So <coughs> we normally around a, a spring tide period and, and post spring. So we would start, uh, we would have breakfast at say 6 o'clock, um, 7 o'clock we'd be on the water, you start having good light at about half past 7, uh, which is really important because most of the, uh, the fishing here is sight fishing. So from 7.30 till again, depending on the, 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 the flood of the tide, till about 11, 12 o'clock. Um, the two the, there, uh, he's coming on to it, coming on to it, strip, 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 strip. And then we start to drop at about 2 there o'clock we go. and fish till about 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, sometimes 6, 6 o'clock. Because remember we're near the equator here so the sun goes down at about just about quarter past 6. Um, so we would normally fish till about half past 5. All of our trips are liverboards uh, and we prefer to use traditional, what are referred to as safari donies, which is a boat very much like this one. Um, they're quite traditional but very, very comfortable. Um, one of the most frequent questions is, is um, am I going to catch fish? And I say to them, well, it's, it's, it depends on your skill levels. And the way I try and explain it is to use the, uh, the golfing uh, analogy. Golf has a handicap system which is fantastic because it compensates for people with a lack of skills and a person who's a really good golfer can play with some, can, can, can have a really competitive game against somebody who's not that good because of the handicap that they have. But in fly fishing unfortunately there is no handicap. So it's a case of getting your skill levels down to a, a, a minus 10 handicap for example because here if you're about an 8 handicapper, 7 handicapper you're going to do pretty well. If you're an 18 handicapper you're going to battle here. So my advice to people always is really work on your skill levels, get your casting up to speed, get your uh, and your ability to see fish and obviously the other thing is, is have patience especially if you're going to target GTs um, and yeah and temper those, those, uh, those expectations relative to your experience and your skill levels. Hi I'm John, I'm from Vancouver, uh, this is my second time fishing with Ufudu. Uh, ben is a wonderful host, uh, it's a tremendous adventure. We've come for a 10 day trip through the Maldives, sailing on this dhoni from atoll to atoll. Uh, lots of variation, some flats full of triggers and trevally varying sorts, a lot of blue fins, lots of small GTs and then to the surf, the mighty surf where it's hard, it's hard fishing, it's the hardest fishing I've ever done. It's incredibly rewarding. Hi my name's Graham, I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, I've come up with Ben Pretorius of Furu uh, Fly Fishing Tours. Uh, my first fly fishing trip to the uh, Maldives, my first dedicated fly fishing trip. Uh, it's been a blast. Um, I've been fortunate enough to land a 
really once in a lifetime fish in the surf. Uh, so that has been obviously a highlight for me. Right. It's not always about catching fish, it's often about the, the fish you don't catch. Uh, and I was privileged enough to catch one and land it. Uh, and then I also was privileged enough to hook one but not land it. Um, we've just come to the end of this trip and we've had some really great success um, I, and I think just according to the response that I've had from everybody they seem to really enjoy the trip and I really hope they'll come back and, and I hope you will consider joining us in, the, in one of our future trips to this fantastic venue um, and it's, it's, it's a great experience, great fly fishing um, it all depends on your, your skill levels at the end of the day so I look forward to seeing you in the future This is why we come back crossing these things in the surf tank. It, it just really, for me, is the epitome of what saltwater fly fishing is all about. These are just such amazing things. To land them here, that's good. Thanks, guys.